We are following breaking news in the escalating tensions with Iran. We've just learned that a British tanker has been seized, and this is an image of this vessel. It's called the Stena Impero. Our senior international correspondent, Fred Plakin, has done extensive reporting in Tehran. He's with us. I also have CNN military analyst General Mark Hurtling. But let's get right to CNN Pentagon reporter Ryan Brown to get more details on what we know at this time. Ryan. Well, a U.S. official saying that Iran uh, seized this vessel, diverting it into Iranian waters. And we've also heard from the vessel's owner, uh, Stena Bulk Northern Marine Management, who said that the vessel was approached by unidentified small craft and a helicopter and that they had lost contact with the vessel while it was operating in the Strait of Hormuz, that narrow stretch of waterway that has been the focal point between these tensions between the U.S. and Iran. And we're, just yesterday, the U.S. said it had downed an Iranian drone and also where Iran had shot down a U.S. drone uh, just a few weeks ago. So again, this very tense area, at least one British vessel has been seized, according to U.S. officials and including to Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, which says it seized the vessel. Now again, Iran has been threatening to do this for some time after it had one of its vessels seized by Royal Marine Commandos in Gibraltar, uh, something the U.K. government did over, over a sanctions violation issue. Iran has threatened retaliation. They had approached a British vessel uh, earlier. A uh, British warship had intervened that time. It looks like this time Iranian uh, forces were able to seize a British vessel in this very critical waterway, the Strait of Hormuz. And according to the company, they believe there are 23 people on board. They haven't been able to get in contact. Fred, what would be Iran's motivation for this, for escalating tensions? Mm -hmm. Hi, Anna. Well, I think uh, there's there's several motivations that uh, they could have for this. On the one hand, it does appear as though it might be a tit-for-tat uh, response to the Brits uh, 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 taking that uh, Iranian tanker off the coast of Gibraltar that Ryan was just talking about. And in fact, uh, in Iranian parliament, there had been senior military commanders, but also parliamentarians who had called for Iran uh, to also try and take a British tanker as well. One of the interesting little nuggets uh, that we've learned is that just today, the government of Gibraltar extended the detention of that Iranian tanker by another 30 days. So hard to see that it would be a coincidence that the Iranians would take a British flag tanker uh, on uh, exactly the day that that happened. But of course, generally also, this has to do with the general tensions between the U.S. and Iran in that mm. waterway. Ryan was just saying it. There have been a flurry of incidents in that waterway. Uh, attacks on tankers that the U.S. has attributed to Iran. The Iranians saying they weren't behind it. The shooting down of that uh, U.S. drone, which the U.S. says was in international airspace. The Iranians are saying that it went into their airspace. And then, of course, all the incidents uh, surrounding the transit of the USS Boxer uh, into that uh, area um, uh, not too long uh, ago, where the Iranians, whether or not that drone was being shot down, were definitely buzzing that ship. They had a helicopter around that ship as well. They've released surveillance video uh, of them tracking the USS Boxer. And I can tell you, I've gone... Uh, through the Strait of Hormuz on a USS uh, on a U.S. Nimitz class carrier, it is extremely narrow, and it's a time when a big ship like that is very vulnerable. So certainly, that is a very dangerous time. But you can tell mm. uh, that the Iranians are showing that they are bold, that they're extremely confident, despite the fact that a lot of the gear they use is, of course, no match for what the U.S. says. They're clearly sending the message that they are the ones who are in control of that area. They're not going to back down from that area. And obviously, all this coming amid the tensions between the Trump administration and the uh, Iranian government uh, over the nuclear agreement uh, over Iran's nuclear program, Anna. Right. Let's let's get to General Hurtling, because as as Fred just mentioned, General Hurtling, there's been a lot going on now between this back and forth between Iran and the U.S. Now they have this U.K. tanker. How would you expect the U.S. or the U.K. to respond? It is going to be increasingly tense, uh, Anna. The, the, the tanker today is one incident. The shoot down yesterday of the Iranian drone, which could not be compared to the kind of drone that uh, they shot down of ours uh, a few weeks ago. There was another ship earlier in the week that disappeared off the radar, a UAE flag tanker called the MT uh, Ria, I, I believe, uh, and it just popped up today uh, that was allegedly smuggling Iranian oil out of the straits. So all of these things uh, show the complexity of the scenarios inside of the Straits of Hormoz. And, and as, as Fred just said, that's a very tight waterway. Uh, the ships uh, are, are very well controlled in that area. You know exactly where you are, according to either Loran uh, 
compasses or through satellite feeds. And folks know whether you're in international orders, uh, international waters or in territorial waters. It's confusing, it's tough, it's tight. Uh, so it will be tense. Let's add one more thing to this issue though, is right now, whenever there are, there are tensions like this between any two countries, diplomatic agencies can talk to each other. The ambassadors can talk to each other. We have really, the US really has no way to communicate with the Iranian government other than by open mm -hmm. communication. And what I mean by that is either news releases or in some cases, Twitter feeds. So that increases the danger and the complexity of this situation where you can't call up uh, the government of Iran and say, what's going on? Let's solve this without uh, any kinetic action. Let's try and do something before somebody gets hurt. It's, it's a very bad situation unlike anywhere else in the world. Quickly, I just want to follow up on something you said uh, at kind of the top of your remarks when you discussed the tit for tat on the different drones that were brought down. First, Iran yeah. brought down a U.S. drone. Then it was about 24 hours ago on this program when we brought the breaking news was we learned that the U.S. had now brought down a, an Iranian drone. You said you can't really compare those two drones. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, uh, not all drones are created equal, Anna. Uh, the, the drone, the U.S. drone that was shot down was the equivalent of a small Learjet, a very technologically advanced. Uh, it cost 180 plus million dollars. It was flying at 30,000 feet, taking big picture strategic intelligence from the area. The drone that was shot down was literally invading the defensive space of the box, the Iranian drone that was shot down was invading the uh, defensive space of the boxer yesterday. You might even wanna put that in the category of perhaps uh, a, a better than average Radio Shack drone that was about a thousand feet above the ship. You can't compare those two things. They're just okay. very different. One is a strategic asset. The other one's a tactical asset.